Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to be checking out crag bags. We're going to be finding out what exactly a crag bag is and trying to pack all this stuff in front of me into the bags. Nowadays, there seems to be a backpack for every eventuality. A crag bag is a backpack that's designed for putting all of your sport climbing kit into and taking it to the crag for a day. And there are designs and special features with a crag bag, which means it's better than a normal backpack for fitting this kind of stuff into it. The three bags we're comparing today are the Low Alpine Outcast 44 litre, the Camp Roxback 40 litre and the BL Siesta 45 litre. Now I've picked those backpacks because they all have the same sizes-ish and similar features. And the plan for today is to take my normal sport climbing kit, which you can see in front of us, and see how well the backpacks can take this kit. Okay, let's get on with our packing test. And we're gonna start with the Low Alpine Outcast 44 liters. Now this is a little bit more expensive than the other backpacks on this test, around about 107 euros at the time of filming. The backpack opens up like a book, which gives you easy access to everything inside it. It comes with a rope bag, which is so, so helpful. We'll put that to one side for the moment. Now there are lots of different features and pockets available with this backpack, including this large mesh pocket. But we're gonna start off with the quick draws. Now, of course, you can choose to pack this however you want. You can just shove them down at the end, but it does have special hooks throughout the backpack. And these are designed to clip your carabiners and quick draws onto. So I'm gonna clip my quick draws at the top of the bag up here. Stage two, I'm gonna take some of my other carabiners and clip this one inside the mesh pocket just to be a little bit different and keep everything separated. So I've got a sling and I'm gonna use the sling on that mesh pocket, a random carabiner, and of course, my trusty Grigri. -gri. I'm gonna dump some more stuff in that mesh pocket, including a head torch. My mentor of climbing always said, always bring a head torch, it doesn't matter where you're going, so cheers Pete, I'm shoving this in. Head torch in, and I'm, while I'm about it, I'm gonna put my climbing shoes into this mesh bag as well. And you can put them in kind of horizontally so they fit quite nicely out of the way like that. Next up, harness. Well, that's going in the mesh pocket as well. As is my chalk. Okay, getting there, getting there. Next, a uh, little dry hand skincare. That's gonna go in the bottom of the bag, I reckon. Okay, let's sort out the rope. So I've got my rope tarp. Currently very, very shiny, thank you, Low Alpine. So that is my rope bag. That's gonna go into the main compartment. Now this is a 60 meter rope, but Low Alpine reckon you can fit an 80 easily inside this bag. Next up, a jacket just on top of that. Shove the food down there. Okay, so let's close this bag up now. Look at that, there's so much room inside that though. Just push that down a little bit. Okay, so that's the bag pretty much ready to go, but there are some extra things I need to put onto it. There's a large pocket in the back, and that is gonna be for my guidebook. I forgot my guidebook, so this is my uh, car's registration document. That's gonna go into the top of the pack. Now there is a reinforced side pocket thing that usually would be mesh on a lot of bags. But Low Alpine have decided to reinforce this so you can put your clip stick into that and then secure it with this little toggle there. Now the reason that this is reinforced is that over time, if this pocket was just mesh, then it would damage and get broken. The reinforced pocket means that it will stay there for much, much longer. If I flip the bag up to the other side, there is a mesh pocket and I'm gonna put my water in that, like so. Water in. Wallet, all that kind of nice stuff. Hmm, that's a bit tricky. I think I should have packed that inside of the bag, but for the time being, I'm gonna put that in the top pocket because I might need quick access to it. But there is an internal pocket where you can put valuables and keep them out of the way. 
for when you're at the crag. Now the final thing is the helmet. You could strap that to the outside or I could place it inside this backpack. The reason I'm not packing it into the bag is because I know a lot of people don't use a helmet when they sport climb. That's up to you personally, I'd recommend shoving one on and you can attach that to the outside or I have got loads of room inside where this helmet will fit. Okay, that's all the stuff very easily packed into here. Let's move on to the next backpack before I tell you my conclusions. The bag has a tri-flex carrying system. An internal steel frame helps with weight transfer to the lumbar and hip belt. A moulded back panel, padded hip belt and internal stiffener means that this bag is comfortable and has great weight distribution. So basically, easy to carry. Okay, so next up is the Boreal Siesta 45. And at 45, it is meant to be one litre bigger than that low Alpine Outcast. So will the stuff fit? Now this bag does feel a little bit different from that low Alpine style. I mean, sure, it is a backpack and it has all the backpack straps you'd expect, big old waist belt down the bottom, and of course, that chest strap across the top. But it also feels a bit like a gym bag. And that's because you can pick it up from there and just carry it around. There's a big zip at one end, which you simply open to reveal the inside of the bag. Now, a big difference with this pack compared to the other two is that it has a seating, sitting rest thing, which is padded. Quite a nice place to have your lunch, but personally, I would have preferred they put a rope tarp in rather than the sitting mat. Now, there are no quick draw loops in this backpack, so I'm just gonna put them all in. Now there's an internal pocket in the same way as there was on the uh, Low Alpine Outcast. And this time I'm gonna put my stuff into the internal pocket. It is limiting in terms of the spaces that you can use. It's all kind of in one central area. Okay, let's put the rope in next because that's the big thing. Now there is a pocket on the outside for the guidebook. Let's see if that fits in a second. Because first of all, I need to do this up. Now all that's remaining is to close the backpack up, but I would like to see if my guidebook fits in the pocket that sits on the inside. Let's have a look. It's a little bit tricky to put it in after you've packed it, so that might be worth remembering. It does fit. I'd want to put that in first if it was my nice guidebook and not my car's book. Now I'm going to close up the lid like so. I'm going to attach the compression straps that fold over the top of the backpack on the top. That's one done. I'm going to clip this onto here. Okay, so the compression straps are in. Final things is the water, which I'm going to put in the mesh pocket, like so. Nice big mesh pocket there, that's good to see. And then I'm going to have to put the clip stick through the compression strap into the mesh pocket which does work really nicely, but you can see how thinner that material is and it might just cause damage. I can use this handle to pick it up from the top or I can put it on like a normal backpack. Interesting, very different style, but before we make any conclusions, let's do our final pack. So our final backpack in this comparison test is the Camp Rocks Back, and this is 40 litres, therefore the smallest of the three that we're looking at today. Now this has a different style of opening system. This is the front of the bag here, which has the handles that you'd expect. But if you flip it over, the zip actually runs through the back section. Let me show you that. So it opens from behind, which is quite good because you can easily access all of your gear, and this is the internals of the bag. Now there is a built-in tarp with this one, so we'll put that to one side for the time being. And compared to the other backpack, this does have some separation hooks here. So as before, I'm gonna put my quick drawers on one of the loops, but I'm gonna use the other side for all of my little bits. So carabiner, gree gree, so that's my gear organized and out of the way. Next, the soft stuff, so shoes. Now, there is an internal pocket for this one, which I'm not gonna use for my keys and I'll explain why in a minute, but will my guidebook fit into that? It looks a little bit smaller than the other ones. 
Yeah, that's not going to fit into there. So an internal pocket to be used for something else. I'll put my guidebook in the bottom. Now, time for the rope. So let's get the tarp bag out. It is a little bit smaller than the other packs, you can tell, just because of how difficult it is to zip it up. But there we go. OK, so bag is packed. There's this zip pocket here, which you can open up. Not very big, but just enough to put some valuables in. Keys in there. Water. There's two mesh pockets on either side with a little protection mesh pocket over the top. Now, the final thing to put in would be the clip stick, but there's not really a space for it. I mean, there's a kind of a loop down the bottom. You might be able to have it in like that and stick it out the side, but it's not best. It's going to knock on to stuff. There's the mesh pocket, of course, which you can slip it into. But then there are no straps that hold it into place, so it is going to move around a little bit. So that could be a bit of an issue. OK, so that's our packing test finished. So which one of the three backpacks would I personally choose? Well, first of all, obviously, they all work. We can fit all of the sport climbing gear we need into the bags, and it all close with no problems. They've got little features on every single one of them, so really it comes down to personal preference and price. Which backpack do you see that has all the features you want and which can you afford? Because the Low Alpine Outcast is a bit more expensive than these other two packs. Almost 30 euros, I think, at the time of filming. So is it worth the extra money? In my opinion, hands down, yes. The Outcast is definitely my best bag on test. And why? Well. Look, I'm a backpack geek. I love all the different functionalities of the Outcast. The fact it's got different pockets for different pieces of gear, it's got areas to clip your quick drawers in, that wonderful system on the outside for your clip stick. You can fit water into it and it's very comfortable. The waist belt especially wraps around you and I can imagine walking long distances to the crag and not having an issue with any pain or weight distribution. The other two, look, they're great packs by themselves and at a slightly cheaper price. They're more of the sort of dump variety. You just throw all your stuff in, take it out of the crag and it organises itself. Now there are pros and cons to that. The pros are is just quicker to pack. You have to sort of fiddle around with the low alpine bag a little bit. And if you were just using it as a more of a general pack, then perhaps those individual areas would get annoying. But personally, I'd spend my money on the Outcast. You might have a different opinion. Do let me know down below what you think. And there's links to all three of these backpacks in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll be doing more tests on these bags in the future, and I'll see you very, very soon.